All right. Um, now to something that uh, we got a lot of feedback from from the last episode. Um, I talked about my uh, Zigbee network devices, like my, all my battery devices going mm-hmm. offline, which was driving me insane. So we had a whole bunch of people um, reach out to me. Um, so thank you everyone that did uh, either comment on YouTube, sent me an email, um, ping me on discord. I really appreciate it. Um, so Nick reached out um, and said, uh, I'm completely the opposite um, to your experience. I have never had a single issue with Zigbee. Um, and he said mentions that uh, he has a Sonoff universal Zigbee uh, USB radio. Um, he's running Zigbee to MQTT. And he has 47 Zigbee devices, and I think I had uh, 60 something uh, last time I checked. Um, and he had a coverage around 210 square meters over two floors, uh, which was pretty reasonable. So the biggest aha moment he had was when he stabilized his Zigbee network by fixing the 2.4 gigahertz Wi Fi spectrum allocation. Now, this right. is something that I have, uh, that I'm fortunate enough that I'm in a detached house. I don't have much uh, 2.4 gigahertz traffic around me, but it's something I was aware of. So for those that aren't aware, I thought this might be a good PSA just for, as a reminder, if you're having issues with your Zigbee network, um, there are some software that you can download um, depending on Windows, Mac, whatever you're using, that can scan your local Wi-Fi coverage or how you work in networking. So you probably know yep. more about me than this. Um, but yeah, there's conflicts with Zigbee and the 2.4 gigs uh, Wi-Fi spectrum. So you've got to choose your right Zigbee channel to avoid anything around there. Yeah, I mean, really, they, they use the same channel space, right? So it's mm. uh, based on that. You might be uh, you might be overlapping a little bit, which isn't necessarily the worst, but it might. It might, it could cause issues if you are, right? So, um, and usually it's easier to change um, your Wi Fi channels than the Zigbee channels, but it is possible to change your, change your Zigbee channels as well. So, um, which might be a better option potentially, depending on if how your Wi Fi is doing. Or if it's neighbor's Wi Fi that you can't change. Yeah. Yeah. There's, and there's always that. Yeah. Um, so Charlie, she reached out to me um, with an email and it said, uh, it's not the number of devices you have, it's actually your Combi 2 stick. And I thought, oh, okay, interesting. Um, so replace it with a Sonoff. I had exactly the same thing happen to me. Um, daily drop-offs, unavailable devices, I had to repair everything. I replaced mm-hmm. the Combi for a Sonoff and all the issues disappeared instantly. So um, I can report that I successfully... Um, migrated my Combi Zigbee network um, to a Sky Connect from Nabucasa. So um, Nabucasa sent out to uh, Rohan and myself free Sky Connects a few months ago. I had it sitting in the drawer waiting for a free weekend to migrate over and test it out. Um, this prompted me to then, all right, you know what, I should give this a try. Um, I will yeah. say I almost lost my Zigbee network in the migration. Um wasn't Ooh, tell us about sailing. That. Okay, so um, I follow. So Sky Connect has a Sky Connect dot Nabucasa page. Um, so I went onto that yeah. and said, "How do you want to set up your network? Are you migrating from another stick?" Um, follow this. So I followed the uh, migration instructions, um, and it got to a point. So I first uh, took a backup. I went through the Home Assistant UI. It prompted me to take a backup of the network. I did that, um, and then. It prompted me, uh, said, okay, cool, insert your new radio. Now I'm running, I'm not running home, this isn't OS, I'm running a Docker container in yep. my environment. So I had uh, two USB paths, I had to use two USB sticks plugged in at the same time, so the Combi and the Sky Connect. I had the paths mapped into the Docker container. Um, yep. So I said, yep, I'll insert my um, USB radio. Now in the instructions on the Nabucasa Sky Connect page, it Look, the screenshots have it that the Sky Connect is automatically detected. Use this radio, away you go. Um, that didn't happen for me. I was presented with what oh. stick are you migrating to? And Sky Connect wasn't in the list. It was, um, you know, like you're migrating to a Sonoff, you're migrating to a uh, Hubs, Bubs, you know, one of those um, uh, Z Wave, yeah, yeah, yeah. Combo Hubs, sticks. I can't remember the name. Whatever. Yeah. I, migrating to a Combi. What are you migrating to? Yeah. So, I didn't know what to choose, um, so I cancelled out of that. Um, did some Googling around, um, and then eventually, 
Now, what happens that when once I clicked, once I downloaded the backup, then what happens is Home Misses does a soft reset on the combi stick. Okay. So now at this point, I've cancelled out not knowing, not thinking, okay, the Sky Connect wasn't detected. I'll just go back and start again, right? No problem. I can't do that now because Home Assistant has already done a soft reset on the combi stick. Oh. And now my Zigbee network is down. I then yeah. go to do another migration. It takes it back up again. But this time it's doing a backup of a reset disk, uh, of a reset combi stick, right? Right, right, um, right. Hoping that the Sky Connect will just get detected. So then I'm like, ah, oh, cool. So in my wisdom, I thought, I know what I'll do. I'm just going to um, restore my home visit from the daily backups that I do. So right. I spun up, uh, I repointed my Docker container to a backup image from uh, 24 hours beforehand. What I had read online was that the Zigbee radio doesn't host any information. It's all based on your Zigbee database file that's yeah. in your config directory. Yeah. Wasn't so. It, unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me. I still had everything unavailable. Um, so something mm. had changed on that Zigbee radio. Um, so then I'm like stressing. Oh wow! Like what do I do now? Right. Um, so there is a restore button that you can use to migrate from a backup. Unfortunately, from what I could see, the backup JSON file that was taken automatically by Home Assistant is different to the JSON file that you can actually manually request from Home Assistant. So if you go into ZHA settings, there's an export right. JSON backup. That gives you like a ZHA backup.json file that you save. That's different to what the automatic backup system that the migration uses for whatever reason, from what I could ascertain. Interesting. Okay. So now I'm like, okay, cool. I can't use that backup to restore this disk. How do, <laughs> what do I do, right? Luckily, somehow, for some odd reason, I had taken a ZHA backup in my downloads folder two months ago. I don't know for what reason. Oh, I was okay. able to, so any devices that I hadn't paired in two months, which would have been one or two, um, were fine. Anyway, I restored that to the combi first to get my Zigbee network back up. And interestingly, mm -hmm. all those uh, devices that were offline, like I had a couple of Windows sensors that had gone unavailable, um, right. that which prompted me to test it out, came back online immediately without repairing. So I immediately knew, okay, this is actually not a Zigbee network issue. There's something going on with that uh, file. the combi stick, right? Like, um, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, I then plugged in. I uh, plugged in the Sky Connect once again. Couldn't get the detection to say, you know, we've detected Sky Connect on your system. You also can't run two uh, instances of ZHA at the same time, whereas you could. Yeah. So, uh, which is frustrating. Um, so I eventually killed, uh, I eventually uh, had to rename uh, what the path was and I actually found in a random Google forum what, um, it asks for, you know, like uh, what IDs to use or something in the USB. I found in a random community mm -hmm. post, you know, use this ID number as the throttle limit or something like that. Um, use this as your serial path, which I matched to my Docker. Yeah. Prayed for the best, got it to then or I connect to the Sky Connect, and then I re-imported that backup from a couple of months ago, and it just worked. Um, and I didn't have to repair all 64 devices. So um wasn't easy, but uh, yeah. with a bit of Googling, yeah. thanks to people in the community, um, posting on the forums, I was able to get my Zigbee network uh, successfully migrated over to the Sky Connect. Um, and I can say I'm three weeks in now on the Sky Connect. I have not had a battery device go offline um, since then. And I also have some blinds, some Zemi smart blinds around the place that are Zigbee based. Yeah. And I, they would just, they would report their status to home business, but I wouldn't be able to control them for whatever reason. So I ended up buying a Broadlink Pro to control them via RF. They have now uh, stuck. Like I have full control over all those blinds as well um, via Zigbee. So I mean, me, like an immense improvement over the combi stick for whatever reason. Not bagging the combi stick, it was, you know, served me well for many years. But for whatever reason now, moving to the Sky Connect has uh, greatly improved my Zigbee experience. So uh, thank you, Charlie, for reaching out. I really am like, very grateful for that. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting. Along, along that same, same line, I was talking to somebody. Uh, Last week, as you know, uh, Phil, I was I was at a sales conference for for work or whatever, and uh, one of uh, somebody I was talking to was talking about their uh, 
the fact that they moved from ZHA to uh, Zig, uh, Zigbee MQTT, and that, mm. that actually apparently changed their experience a ton, right? Mm. So they they were like, you know, this is this is pretty big in the sense that um, they had similar kind of issues, um, devices not showing up, devices dropping off, that kind of thing, or devices just generally being unavailable. Um, and and moving to, moving to Zigbee to MQTT made a bit of a difference there too. So I wonder if it's that combination of Conb plus ZHA etc. Yeah, um, was giving giving that issue. I wonder too if there is an update in uh, like to the actual USB uh, stick potentially. Yeah, that that um, would cover that. But uh, last I checked, that update is a pain to. Yeah, I, I would have had to, to like do. rerun. I think it's called Photon or Foscon, whatever they call the yeah the, the native if app. If, and oh, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, that's only available on Windows too, which I don't have any Windows machine. No, there's a right? Docker container. It's, there's a there's a Docker container you can run. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I maybe I'm thinking of another stick that I updated, which had only yeah. Windows. Uh, oh, oh, you know what? It was my it was my Z Wave. Uh, yeah, stick that was only so. Yeah, sorry. Yes, you are right. There is a Docker container for. Uh, but interestingly, uh, to, to update the Foscon container, yeah, yeah, to update the firmware, they do have like Windows and Mac OS uh, update binary files. So maybe you can't do it through the Docker container. Um, Honestly, if it is, it's a lot of easier for me to unplug it, plug it into my laptop, and just yeah, push it right. Like it's uh... so yeah, I yeah, um, that's at least now like and i i had read a lot of um reports of people you know saying oh sky connect you know i'm having issues with this sky connect i haven't had any issues i've got the little um thing plugged in like the little extension cable that nobukasa mm-hmm. have in the box um i've plugged that in and it's been great i am running yeah. the default firmware so the one without matter enabled which apparently if you do right. enable matter has some issues um I just want Zigbee to work for now. Like I'm happy. I don't want to touch it anymore. Like just keep those battery <laughs> yeah. devices connected. Yeah, you have to remember as well uh, for these kind of radios to be detected, it has to be USB two, not USB three, mm. right? Um, that tends to trip up a lot of people because you think latest device you want to do three. Yeah, um, that's that's actually not the case. It's actually better on two um, or more supported on USB two. So something to keep in mind so if you have a option of usb2 or usb3 ports go for the usb2 for your radios yeah 100 percent. so that's why if you try it sometimes you try it on one port doesn't work you try it on another works great so there you go um so yeah charlie and nick thank you so much for uh reaching out and everyone else um yeah it, it's really it really is it, the problem is it's a mixed bag out there like some people saying oh, i'm using a combi i've had no issues i've yeah. got 40 odd devices other people are like oh yeah so thank you charlie and nick really appreciate it yeah and to everybody else that sent us emails that's it